My coverage of CES 2023 is brought to you by Gigabyte, Asus, Kioxia, and Cooler Master. Hi everyone, welcome back to my continuing coverage of CES 2023. I am visiting Kioxia, maker of fancy high-end SSDs, NAND flash, really, really fast storage. And they have some of the fastest storage ever designed here. The smallest chips with the biggest capacities that I've ever seen. Let's take a look. And here's a glowing, glorious desktop of some of the fastest SSDs in the world. And I got to level with you guys. I got to be honest. I, I'm not uh, from an IT background, so I haven't worked in the data centers before. I've not worked an IT job. I haven't even built that many things that you could call a high-end server. So I'm going to be leaning on some of uh, my rep friends here to uh, elucidate some of the specs and stats on some of the, this hardware. But one thing I do know is color coding. Color coding is always appreciated. Kyoxia has made all the blue SSDs over here, their enterprise drives. We got the orange SSDs over here, which are their data center drives. And then we have the green drives over here, which are their client SSDs. So let's start with the client SSDs because these are probably the most familiar to anyone who has maybe built a gaming PC before. You guys might be familiar with the BG5. This is the tiniest little SSD. That, that you ever did see. So these are made to go in machines, uh, laptops and desktops and other devices that can accept M.2 NVMe SSDs of this size. This is a 2240 size, which is 22 millimeters wide and 40 millimeters long. And the cool thing about this one, the BG5 and its predecessor, the BG4, is it is, uses a, an SOC design. So there's an AND flash in here, a single chip, which has uh, all of your uh, storage up to two terabyte capacity on this one. And there's the uh, actual controller and everything integrated as well. So it's sort of a single chip solution. And that's what lets them keep this so small, so tiny, uh, suitable for installation on even some portable handheld gaming devices. But I didn't say that out loud. I heard you get in trouble for that. The, the people hunt these down, right, to put in Steam decks? Yes. People do. Yeah. People do. Yeah. yeah. They do. Actually, a quick correction. I got ahead of myself. The BG5 currently is available in capacities up to one terabyte, but I'm going to show you in just a second how they might be expanding that to provide even more terabytes of storage on a single chip like that. So they do have a larger version of the BG5. This one has uh, up to four of the chips in here. So that one can go up to two terabytes currently, and they uh, can also expand that up to four terabytes. And then there's the XG8, which is going to have the maximum performance um, from their client lineup. And this one is currently available in capacities up to four terabytes. And it does have DRAM cache as well. Now, while I've got these in my hand, I wanted to quickly address some questions I've, that I've gotten about them because I've uh, run some ads for Kioxia's SSDs and people ask me if they can buy them. And you can actually directly purchase these in North America. They are available to clients directly in a lot of other regions in the world. However, if you're in North America, you can probably get these via purchasing an OEM device, like a laptop that has these integrated. And in fact, these are all over in the US but they're in devices that were sold as a complete unit. Let's talk about the rest of these drives though. And I, I've asked for uh, some information on drives that if you're like a storage nerd or you're really into uh, data center hardware, uh, what you might think, wow, that's really cool. So let's start with the Kioxia EM6 here, which does use a 2.5 inch form factor with a 15 millimeter height, uh, which is fairly common in the data center. This one goes to capacities up to uh, eight terabytes or just shy of eight terabytes, 7,680 gigabytes. But the unique thing here is that it actually has an ethernet connection built in as well as the actual network hardware to run that. So you could add this uh, to your network as storage without necessarily needing uh, a control unit or even indeed like a dedicated uh, storage server to actually control it or uh, manage the network traffic. So that's a really easy way to add storage to your network without necessarily needing to add a bunch of extra hardware uh, like boxes that have CPUs to control the data storage. Next, we're gonna talk about the CM7 which is the successor to the CM6. And this is probably the most beastly, high-end, most powerful drive uh, that they have here. In terms of IOPS, or input-output operations per second, this one hits 2.5 million. That's absolutely absurd. That is absolutely way, way, way more performance than anyone in their right mind would uh, necessarily need for home usage, for example. That's why these are enterprise drives that are made for uh, much beefier installations than you know your home server or even your home PC. But if you're impressed by those IOPS, uh, consider the capacities up to 30 terabytes, 30 terabytes in a 2.5 inch, 15 millimeter tall uh, form factor here. That's, that's a lot of terabytes. And in terms of data density, uh, that's another way you can actually save uh, both on space and on power usage uh, when you're building out a server. Denser drives, you simply need fewer of them in order to get up to the capacity that you want, and fewer drives are going to draw less power. But look at this. There's not just one CM7. There are two of them. 
this is the CM7 in a different form factor. I was just talking about things like power savings that are very important to uh, the data center and enterprise usage. The CM7 has a new form factor called EDSFF, or that's uh, specifically referring to the connector here. So as you can see, there's a single connector there at the top. And from my admittedly limited understanding of the EDSFF form factor, uh, they make better use of space. They're also easier to keep cool. And as we all know, if you can keep your hardware cooler, it's going to have a longer lifespan typically. And although official certifications are still forthcoming, uh, we are told that this is going to be fully PCI Express 6.0 compatible. So that's going to give a big boost to bandwidth. Uh, of course, if you're building a gaming PC, we're, we're at PCI 4.0. And even with the fastest new graphics cards like the RTX 4090, they didn't need to go beyond PCIe 4.0. That is not the case in the server and enterprise space. Uh, so taking advantage of all that bandwidth is definitely going to be something that people building the latest and greatest uh, servers is, are going to want to do. And it also supports a variety of uh, uh, sizes in terms of the form factor. So here is simply a smaller version of that, same uh, EDSFF connector there on the end. This is the XD7P, and this is also uh, here in a few different varieties as well. Actually, I take that back, brief correction. This is the XD7P, which we have one version of here. This is EDSFF uh, E1.S in terms of the form factor. And then here we have three different versions of the same drive, the XD6. This is EDSFF E1.S. And basically uh, you're having a trade-off here in terms of the size of the cooling solution on the unit. So this one is uh, 9.5 millimeters tall. This one is 15 millimeters tall. This one is 25 millimeters tall, or about the same thickness as a typical case fan. And as you can probably see, the height is simply allowing them to add uh, more, more heat sinks. <laughs> more heat sinks, uh, more material, more surface area for heat dissipation. So if you have uh, the space for the larger size, uh, then you can run with more power and more performance while also having more efficient cooling. So guys, there's just a smattering of some of the uh, drives that Kyoxia produces. And again, I know I have some of my audience who actually knows a little bit more, actually probably a lot more than I do about this stuff. So if you guys have found this foray into the uh, data center and enterprise space entertaining or elucidating at all, let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear it. I know Kyoxia would as well. And I'm gonna finish uh, with this little display that they have over here because you guys might not know what Bix Flash is. It is stacked NAND memory. So uh, they got to a certain point when they were using planar memory where they were like, we can't make it any denser. So we gotta start stacking it on top of each other. And I'm not going to attempt to explain it in any further depth than that, but uh, here's an example somewhat just showing how they're stacking all of these layers on top of each other because the end result is a chip that looks kind of like that, which if you're just looking at it is fairly flat. In fact, here's one of them right there. And as you can see from the side, fairly flat. These need to fit into small devices, storage devices, uh, M.2 NVMe SSDs, and so on and so forth. But this sort of exploded view gives you a better idea of how many layers they're actually stacking in there, how much detail and uh, how many little bits of data are stored all, way, all throughout. And they're, of course, continuing to expand this technology. They're stacking more layers, but not just more layers, but better layers, yeah. denser layers. Look at the actual amount of storage that they get if you're comparing this to other 3D stacked uh, NAND flash. 162 layers for 2.66 terabytes on a single little chip that's about that big. That's 2.6 terabytes on a chip that's about that size. And a few years back, I had a chip that was about this size, the one they originally used for the BG4. And I was like, that's 500 gigs on a chip that size, which also included, the, it was an SOC that included a controller as well, which was equally impressive. But really amazing how this technology continues to evolve and how they're able to just wedge more and more bits of data into such a small area. But guys, that's all the time I have for this video. I want to say a huge thank you to Kyoxia for sponsoring my CES 2023 coverage. My sponsors are what allows me to come here and make not just this video, but all the videos that you've seen me make so far this week. So a big thank you to them, as well as Gigabyte, Asus, and Cooler Master. I have more videos still to come, so if you're interested, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. We'll see you all in the next one.